Welcome back to Science Class. I'm your host, Mark Rover. It's good to be here. It's a beautiful Monday. So today, we're going to be talking about how to waterproof your hand. And I think you can make the argument your hand actually is kind of waterproof. We're going to talk about like how you make it so it could come out of water dry. All right. And as usual, to answer the question, we have three clues to kind of help us get there. And we use as few equations as possible. And we're, our goal here, again, is to not just memorize facts. We're about getting the right mental model. Because with a mental model, you can understand the world a lot better and you can extrapolate and really have a good understanding of everything that's going on in the physical around you. So why are we doing this? Because coronavirus is two thumbs down. I wanted an ability to connect with you guys a little bit more. Plus, I want to be a high school physics teacher one day. So this is good practice for me. Um, I will, I do have an announcement. There will not be any class this Wednesday. I apologize, but the good news is I still want to be making normal videos, right? My monthly videos. So I need to film for something this Wednesday. So no class on Wednesday, but we will have class on Friday. All right, so last week, uh, last Friday was a little abstract with like electromagnetic waves and stuff. So today we're gonna get down to basics again. We got some really cool demos that you can do at home, as well as the science, I think will be pretty simple to understand. So we're just gonna get right into it with clue number one of how we're gonna do this. Qua. Oh. Cohesion, that's a fancy word. What the heck does cohesion mean? Let's pull in tight on this camera and I'll show you. So I've got a paper clip here and no big surprise, when we learned last Wednesday, a paper clip is made of steel it's more dense than water, of course it's gonna sink, right? But what if I bent a paper clip like this and then I lowered it a little slower? It is now floating on the water. And you're like, what the heck, Mark? My life is a lie. Everything you told me last week when we talked about buoyancy you should say those should sink, right? Well, you probably know this from a common term called surface tension, right? There's some surface tension on the water that's causing it to stay up. Let me explain what's going on there. So, oi, I've got this snatum here. Sorry, there we go. Okay, now this is oxygen, this is H2O. Two hydrogens, one oxygen, right? So these are attracted to each other because of basically magnets, positive and negative forces. Well, what happens when another water molecule comes up like this? This is negatively charged, this oxygen, and these white things, the hydrogen, are positively charged. So what do you think happens? Well, it's like a magnet. They kind of come close and it's like, hey, what's up? And they kind of stay close to each other and more water molecules come and it sort of forms like a magnetic net. That is what is called cohesion. So here's a little diagram I've got here. This is like a mug of water, right? All these blue things are water molecules and that those black lines represent the cohesion. That's kind of like the forces in between the molecules. Now there's an air in this diagram. See if you can find it. it has to do with the tug of war thing we talked about last week. If you look at this top layer they're being pulled down. So like one, take example, one in the middle, it's equally suspended all around. So it, it wouldn't move, right? It has a tug of war ropes being pulled in all directions. It's gonna stay right where it's at. But if you look at this top layer, they're pulling side to side. Okay, so it won't move laterally, but up and down, it's just being pulled down. There's nothing to pull it up. So what's gonna happen? This, these molecules underneath, they're gonna win that tug of war and it's gonna pull that top layer down. So in reality, cup of water actually looks like this. See that top layer? These things get pulled down and it sort of creates a film, right? Where the, there's more density of water molecules so it can support more on the top surface, right? Forms like a skin. So let's see that in action. I've got a penny right here and I've got a question for you. How many drops of water do you think I could put on a penny? Make a guess in the comments or tell someone you're with, right? Maybe you think it's like four or five or six. Let's count these out together, all right? One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oops, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, whoops, 20. Oh no, I kind of, it's really hard to, <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> All right, a lot of this is coming out because I suck at putting these drops out. But if you do this at home, what you should find is the number, what happens is it bubbles up like that on top, right? We did this in rehearsal because we couldn't get in tight enough, but the number should be somewhere around 40. So that's what we saw when we were just doing it right before this, when I was a little bit better with putting my drops out. It creates this, it bubbles up like that, right? And that makes sense because it's like a skin where you see it kind of pulling together on the outer surface. Now, Animals in nature sort of know about this and they take advantage of it. Can you think of an animal that takes advantage of this surface tension phenomenon? You got this water strider, right? And these are very fascinating creatures. Maybe you've seen them. This should look kind of familiar on like a pond, right? See those little dimples? They're floating. What's well, cool? Look how they propel. They've got two little oars with their middle legs and the other ones just keep them on top of the water. Now, these guys are kind of brutal. I didn't realize it. They'll, they'll find animals that can't swim in the water coming down the stream, and then they just like suck their guts out, which is, uh, yeah, it's, that's, that's nature for you. This is amazing. Uh, but that's the circle of life. The animals go in there, that's what they do. They find animals that can't swim, and they just have a nice juicy lunch. Um, so here's a question for you. Let's say you were in space, and you had a, a, a towel that was really wet, right? And you went to wring it out. Now on Earth, if you did that, whoosh, the water comes down. What do you think would happen in space? Make a guess, tell someone. What do you think would happen? Well, we know what happens thanks to the Canadian national treasure, Commander Chris Hatfield. He did this, he did this experiment, check this out. So that's filled with water. He's gonna squeeze it, but of course, the water has that skin on the outside that keeps it together, right? That cohesion. It's becoming a tube of water. The water's all over my hands, in fact. It rings out of the cloth into my hands. And if I let go of the cloth carefully, the water sort of has it stick to my hand. You can see it, it even sticks to his hand there a little bit because, again, it's like the water is like kind of like magnets, right? It's that surface tension, that cohesive forces want to stick together. Okay, so. What if I told you there is a way to totally destroy this cohesion? And what if I told you you've touched it today, hopefully? Um, I'm just going to get right to clue number two, baby. Soap! <laughs> that was my best throw yet. Soap is magical. It does two things. One of the things it does is it destroys the cohesion on the top surface. So. I'm going to come back here. You might have seen this before, something like this. This is just a bowl with some pepper on top. I'm going to get a little bit more. And now I'm going to take, I'm just going to dip this toothpick in this soap, right? And let's see what happens. It hits it and it goes all out, right? It spreads out. I had this pepper in earlier, so it didn't, it didn't go out with like the amazing force you should see if it's like fresh pepper in there. But you see how quickly it went out, right? So let's talk about the mental model there that can help us understand that a little bit better. These molecules are all like kind of holding hands at the top surface, right? Soap comes in and you be like, uh-uh, you guys can't hold hands. Break it up, right? So any, any type of cohesion where these molecules are kind of attached to each other, Soap gets in and it negates that and makes them like non-magnetic anymore. And so think of it as like a net on the top surface. I've heard people explain this as like, oh, the, the, the particles run away from the soap. But if you have the mental model that it's sort of like a net on this top surface, again, if you have just a fresh bowl of water, this is really pronounced. I'm going to do it again and think of like a tight net on the top surface and it's being cut, just sliced right down the middle. And then what you see here should really make sense with that, right? So because there's still forces out here, 
you've cut this net in the middle, like a bungee cord or rubber band, and it kind of all moves to the outside, as you can sort of see there. Um, so knowing that, take a guess at what happens here. What do you think would happen if I take another soap toothpick and I put it at the top of this bowl with the paper clips? Well, I would guess those paper clips are going to move away and sink. So this is a good practical joke. T challenge someone. You have a bowl and they have a bowl. And then in your bowl, give them soapy water and you just have normal water. And then see uh, like whose does better. So now we're going to do another cool thing with the same principle. I've got like a little foam boat here, OK? I got this idea from my buddy Science Bob. And I've just cut the back out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this soap. Again, this is something you can do. This is just like foam. And I'm going to put it oy, in this little, I'm, I'm applying the soap to this cavity. See if you can see it on this camera, OK? That little triangular cutout is the only surface that I'm sort of putting that soap on, OK? Now, what do you think is going to happen if I put it in this trough, right? I got a little rain gutter regatta here, OK? Let's see what happens when I stick this boat in this water. One, two, three. Dude, how cool is that? We could have gone way further. Uh, what's great, what's happening here is you have that same principle, right? Because the triangle is happening, you have this triangle, and that's where it's breaking down the water. It's basically shooting out like rubber bands out its back as it cruises along. We could have done like twice. You could totally do this yourself at home. And now here's a question. If I have one that looks like this, right? you see how the cutout's at an angle? What do you think would happen in that case? Is the boat going to go straight? It shouldn't, right? And I test this. It doesn't. It's really cool. If you have a bowl, you could just have this thing go in circles because there's a thrust vector kind of pointing out that way. So it spins around like this. And it's really cool. Um, so soap does two things. It's a one-two punch. The first is it's like, hey, you two, break it up. Those cohesion forces, it breaks it up. That's helpful when you're washing your hands because instead of the water sticking together, it actually gets on your hands and it can get into the dirt and it breaks down the dirt a lot better. The second thing soap does though is that it breaks down fat. And this is why soap is the freaking best when it comes to coronavirus. This is a coronavirus. It's just a shell that's kind of like a fatty shell. It's made of fat. Inside you've just got some DNA. That's basically what a virus is. Okay? So the soap not only will break up water molecules and make you get your hand better, but it'll come and just dissolve this shell, this, this fat shell, and then it just totally makes the virus like not even a thing. Oh, all right. I'm going to do something I shouldn't do. I need this rain gutter off. It's filled with water. The ends are kind of duct taped, so I'm just going to cut the end and uh, get it out of the way for the next demo. Let's see if this works. Wow. It's working a lot better than I anticipated it would. All right. That's probably good. <laughs> oh, no. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> Eli, come help me. Grab this. This is my amazing assistant, Eli. Just take that. I'm going to walk over with you. OK. Good, good. OK. Get out of here. Thanks, buddy. All right. Now I've got this dish here. We're going to demonstrate the fact that it can destroy fat. I've got some whole milk. You need, you need to get whole milk. You can't do this with like non-fat milk. All right. So you've already showed what it can do to cohesive forces. Now, because vitamin D has a lot of fat, I'm going to pour this in here, take some cool food coloring, and do this, and make a cool design. OK, can we see this? OK. All right, now I'm going to dip two toothpicks in our soap here. What do you think is going to happen? Should see some cool fireworks here. Let's see. How cool is that? It feels like a super 
power where it's just like shoots like a plasma out. So again, right there, it's sort of destroying that fat and getting rid of any sort of uh, the lipids that are, uh, actually I can just hold this right here. Okay, so we're, we're powering through this. All right, now that brings us to clue number three. Another fancy word, which is adhesion, right? We've got cohesion and adhesion. Um, and in this case, let's pull this camera in, Alex. Um, this is sort of, cohesion is when molecules stick together themselves. Adhesion is when those same molecules stick to the cup. Here we go, <laughs> I threw it away, right? So you've got these molecules, cohesion is sticking together, adhesion is where they stick to the thing on the outside. So with adhesion, you get something like this. You see this red paper towel? Check this out. You've probably seen this kind of concept before. See how it creeps up that towel? That's adhesion happening. That's just water there. It's creeping up the paper towel. That's also called like capillary action. And the reason this matters in nature a lot, it's really important, a clue is on my shirt. Where does capillary action happen in nature, you think? Think trees, right? It rains, there's water on the ground. How do they get that tree up? They don't have pumps. They get it up through tiny little tubes, veins. And it's this capillary action, the adhesion sticking to the side, that allows the water to go up the tree. Um, so that's also like the no-slip condition. If uh, you take fluid dynamics at the edge, you have the boundary layer, the no-slip condition, that's due to adhesion. So what if I told you there was also a way to destroy adhesion, right? You've probably seen this before. I've got these two shoes here, okay? See if you can guess, whoops, let me move it over. How's that, good? Switch cameras? All right, so here we go. So that's, see how that's on the shoe? See how it's starting to like seep into the shoe itself? It runs off, but it's kind of staining. Check out this side. How, I just, this is just so cool. Look at that. So what's happening is these shoes have a special hydrophobic coating on them that's kind of oily, and it's just not allowing those water droplets to stick to it. That would be adhesion, right? So it destroys that adhesion. No matter what I try and do, I can't get it wet, unlike this side, right? That's just beautiful. So with something like this, when you make a hydrophobic coating on it, you still have the cohesion with that water and it's seeing itself, but the adhesion basically goes to zero. And that's because it has like microscopically, it's really rough and it kind of makes the surface oily because water and oil don't like to mix. All right, so that kind of brings us to how to make our hand waterproof, okay? So I've got this water here, and I've got some baby powder, basically. And truth be told, I, th <laughs> I thought this is still pretty cool. I wanted something you guys could do at home. So if you just have some baby powder, it has to be the kind with talc. I can now stick my hand in here. See how it's staying dry? You could go pretty deep with it. It's not like perfectly, perfectly waterproof. But I like that it's just something, if you tried using flour, the water would soak up and adhere to the flour. But talc has special properties that doesn't allow it to do that. Now, my buddy, Science Bob, uh, he, he did this. He had a, a special powder. Here we go. This powder is called um, lycopodium powder, which is it's hydrophobic. Same principle as the talc, but you could go even deeper into the water. That's really cool, right? So I have to, of course, give the crown to my buddy Derek from Veritasium. He used Aerogel, which just, with coronavirus, you can't get your hair in Aerogel right now. Right next but this is awesome. That is trippy. All right. So. That's a bunch of stuff that you could totally try at home uh, to just play around with this concept of surface tension,
cohesion, adhesion, a lot of stuff there. Hopefully that makes sense. Knowledge, wireless knowledge transfer complete. So the challenge for this time, again, not for Wednesday, but for Friday, I want to see who can put the most amount of paper clips on a surface and then have some creative way of destroying the cohesion. So by getting rid of the surface tension with some soap, and then I want to see them all fall down. So who can do the most and have a cool way to kind of have the cohesion go away, all right? That's the challenge. Speaking of a challenge, uh, and, and to submit that, by the way, just tag me on social media. It could be Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, or TikTok. Uh, here are the, res the, the, the submissions from last week. They're just freaking amazing. Watch this. What? Cooper there at the end is cheating. I mean, he used watermelons, he used Mario, that pot is planted like a tube. He just, he knew exactly what's going to work for me. Uh, so, like I said last time, Bose wanted to give out like eight pairs of headphones, so these A700s, which are kind of dope, They're, they will be reaching out to you in the next like day or so if you were the ones, one of the ones they selected. Um, again, I kind of struggle with this, like intrinsic versus extrinsic rewards. I don't, I kind of want people to do this for the sake of doing it, to learn the science and, and to learn something cool, but it's cool sometimes, I think, to offer something nice too, if you can. So try and do it for the right reasons. If you win headphones, so be it. But there's so much cool science here to learn. So once again, for this Friday, we'll be giving out eight. You can either do the challenge or explain some topic, or you could just post about this class to your friends on social media, and they'll pick someone, and all those things work. And we kind of track it, and we'll reward those accordingly. Um, all right, so my friend Diana is going to give, introduce the question for next week. But first, I want to show this clip I found on social media, which is just so cool. This is a nurse who's going to work, and her neighbors came out to surprise her. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, Taylor, look, right here. <laughs> oh, damn. So, gotta throw the music on. And I'll just say, uh, the next two weeks are probably gonna be, like, kind of the little weird. There's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna need to go to the hospital because social distancing hasn't fully kicked in yet. Um, so, just be sure that you're super nice to the medical professionals like that. These nurses are literally risking their lives for the rest of us. As well as like the delivery drivers, right? Or the people working at the grocery store. This is a time just to up our game and to all come together and just be really cool to each other. Like what can you do personally, if you, even if you're not a medical professional or a delivery driver, just work at a grocery store or something, you know, what can you do to punch coronavirus in the face and make someone's day a little bit better? This is like tricky for all of us. So we got to do our parts to make the world a little bit better of a place in these really hard times. But having said that, you know, I have full confidence we're going to be fine. This is going to be bumpy, but together we got this. So let me show you this clip from Diana introducing next week's question. Hey Mark, it's Diana from the YouTube channel Physics Girl. I have a question for you so dire that I had to send you a video message. Okay. How do astronauts weigh themselves when they're weightless, when they're floating in space? Mm -hmm. All right. So how the heck do astronauts weigh themselves in space? I, this is going to be a really cool lesson on inertia and mass. There's a lot of really interesting demos and really cool mental models to be updated here. So don't just Google the answer. Just try and think of it. I want creative answers that aren't like the typical, maybe even, the, it's not even how they actually do it. That just shows you've been thinking about how they could possibly do something like this. So 
With that, class is officially dismissed. I will go through if I've got some questions. And uh, you know, you could leave now, but I'll answer like two or three minutes of questions. And then, you know, like I said, answer the questions in the video description, do the challenge, tag me on anything on social media, and uh, we'll give some people some headphones. All right, so questions. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Is that your hand at the beginning? Yes, I do my own stunts. Good question, Shirley. Um, what is your favorite video you've done? I did one on the rover landing. That's like one of my least popular videos because it was like from 2012 or something. But when the rover, we send the Curiosity rover out again next February, uh, I'm gonna rehash that one, I think. Because um, it's just, it was really cool. I showed from like a personal standpoint what it felt like to see the rover go to Mars. Um, <laughs> if it's from Sam, if you become a teacher, would you be the kind of teacher that would blow stuff up in your class uh, if your class is well behaved? And if so, would it be a watermelon? Yes and yes. Great question, Sam. Uh, is, that hot, is, is that pointer a Hot Wheels track? Heck yeah, that pointer's a Hot Wheels track. Come on. Only the best here. All right. Isn't skin hydrophobic? Uh, kind of, but not really. Like it, if you dip it in, right, it comes up wet. If it's truly hydrophobic, it gets rid of the adhesion, and you wouldn't see that wet part on your skin. It's sort of more or less impervious to water. Like if you put it in, your, 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 fingernails, your fingers do get kind of wrinkly on the fingertips and stuff. Um, so not really hydrophobic. Uh, wait, water is magnetic? Heck yeah, water is magnetic. How cool is that? Um, I think you can actually even do this. If you put a magnet underwater and have it running in your sink, you put a magnet up next to it, you'll get the water stream to actually bend towards the magnet because it actually is magnetic. Um, all right, so is there a film on the bottom? That's pretty good, we'll leave it at that. So that's it for this week. We'll see you, or for today, we'll see you on Friday because again, no class Wednesday. Thanks so much, you guys are the best. This is crazy, we'll see you next time.